Hi everybody, my name is Cameron and today we're going to be looking at crude oil and fuels. This is also going to be the introduction to hydrocarbons. Okay, so we covered earlier that when it comes to carbon molecules, okay, they can bond with other carbon molecules, okay, to form these very long chains. Okay, now hydrocarbons are molecules that contain only carbons and hydrogens and they can get incredibly long uh, as the carbon atoms are going to be linking together. Okay, these carbon atoms are then going to have other groups that attach to them, but are mainly carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so when it comes to crude oils, crude oils are a finite fuel. Okay, we know that it's going to end eventually, and it's from organic decaying matter. Organic meaning it contains carbon. Okay, so Many, many years ago, uh, thousands of years ago, at the age of the dinosaurs, vegetation, dinosaurs, okay, were put under certain conditions, okay, that allowed them to decay and become this crude oil, okay. Now, crude oil itself are extremely long chains of these carbon and hydrogens, okay, such as C20, like 20 carbons in a chain, okay. Now, the issue is, the more, the longer the chain, the less reactive the hydrocarbon will be. Okay, so what we do with crude oil that we extract from the ground is we're going to refine it. And how we refine it is through fractional distillation. Okay, and we are then going to be breaking down that, uh, these long chains of hydrocarbons into shorter, more reactive chains. We then process these reactive chains to get petrol, diesel, kerosene, paraffin, and we use the longer chains for stuff like road work and plastics. Okay, but we'll get to that now. So it's important to know hydrocarbons are going to be carbon and hydrogen molecules, okay, or molecules containing carbon and hydrogen. They can get extremely long or short. The longer it is, the less reactive it is, the shorter it is, the more reactive it is. Okay. Um, when it comes to these hydrocarbons, okay, if there is a single bond between all the carbons, it's called an alkane. Okay. So this word alkane means single bonded carbon atoms. So it can be anything from CH4 okay, to C4H10 and above, as long as there's only a single bond between the carbon molecules okay now the formula okay so so let's, let's start with the prefix so if you have uh, one carbon it's methane you see meth meaning one and ane because it's single bonded when there are two carbons we say eth ane okay you can also say ethane okay eth two carbons ane single bond all the way up to but so what you just have to remember, try to come up with a, um, a rhyme or something to remember it, but it's meth, eth, prop, but. You can then go pent and hex as well. Okay, so if there are six, um, six carbons in a hydrocarbon, the single bonded would be hexane. Four hydrocarbons, or four carbons in the hydrocarbon, butane with single bonds. Okay, now, if we had to have a lot of carbons, okay, how would we know how many hydrogens are going to be in that molecule? Okay, so as we can see here, if we're going to have uh, two carbons, okay, then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now the formula that we can use to figure out how many uh, hydrogens we're going to have for the carbons. Is this so CN N is going to be the number of carbons H is going to be 2 multiplied by the number of carbons plus 2 that's how many hydrogens we're going to have so if they ask you something like the alkane with 12 carbons how many hydrogens will it have instead of drawing an entire hydrocarbon with 12 carbons and then counting all the hydrogens that it could have we just go 12 multiplied by 2 is 24 plus 2 is 26. So it's going to be C12H26. Okay, so 
the different hydrocarbons that we're going to have. So it's good to remember these points, okay? But try and understand it instead of just memorizing it. Okay, so short chain hydrocarbons, okay, where it's between one carbon to eight, they are going to have a lower boiling point, which makes sense because they are much more reactive, okay? A low viscosity, viscosity is how thick it is, okay? So think of something like ethanol, okay? Or, um, what else? Ethane, okay? Propane. Propane is a gas, <laughs> you see that, okay? Whereas the longer chain hydrocarbons are going to be thicker. They're going to have a higher boiling point, okay? Because they're longer, the bonds are stronger between them. Okay, the more reactive something is, the more flammable it's going to be too. So lower or shorter chain hydrocarbons are going to be um, very flammable, uh, highly volatile. Okay, so like propane, it's going to be a gas. Okay, um, there's more uses for the short chain hydrocarbons because we're going to use them as fuels. Okay, we can also use them for disinfectants. Okay, but they're going to evaporate very quickly. Uh, low boiling point, which is evaporation, very flammable, low viscosity, very liquidy, runny. Okay, longer chain hydrocarbons, the opposite. So high boiling point, they have a high viscosity, so they're very thick. Uh, they have a low flammability, uh, low volatility, so it's going to be a liquid because it's so thick. Um, and it can be used to make tar, okay, and a lot of plastics. Now, to test for alkenes and alkanes. So, an alkane is when there is a single bond between the carbons. An alkene is when one or more of the carbons is going to have a double bond in them. Okay? Normally, just a single double bond between the carbons. Okay? And to test this, we're going to use the bromine solution. So, bromine is usually going to be an orange color. Okay? But what happens is if it's an alkene that bromine so if it's an alkene and it has a double bond that bromine is going to break the double bond and the bromine molecules are going to be connected to the carbons that used to have the double bond you see and once those bromine molecules are taken into the hydrocarbon the solution will go from orangey brown to clear and that's how we know it's an alkene but if it's an alkane Okay, that means that it's saturated. Okay, so if it is a saturated hydrocarbon, it means that it has the full amount of hydrogens. Therefore, all of the bonds are taken up and that bromine won't connect to any of the hydrogens, I mean, sorry, the carbons, and therefore it's going to stay orange. So that's how we know it's an alkane. Alkenes, we say, are unsaturated. That bond can be broken and joined with bromine, making it colorless. Okay. So that's the test for alkenes and alkanes. We use the bromine test. Okay, so when we're talking about breaking down this crude oil into its various length chains, uh, this is what we're going to use. It's called a fractional distiller. Okay, the process is called fractional distillation. So it starts off by vaporizing this crude oil at around 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then at different temperatures, okay, up the distiller, um, we're going to have the condensation of different length hydrocarbons. Okay, so the further up the hydrocarbon makes it, the shorter the chain. Okay, so if it condenses at uh, this area over here, the chain is going to be longer. Okay, because the boiling point is going to be higher. But the more volatile and the shorter chains are going to be only condensing at the top here. Okay, because they're going to have a much lower um, boiling point. Okay, and yep, the remaining long chain hydrocarbons are going to be pumped out, and they're very thick, very sticky, and that's going to be used for making tar for roads or plastics. So, when these hydrocarbons are burned, okay, such as our fuels, they are going to create carbon dioxide and water in a complete combustion okay that's when there is enough oxygen provided for the reaction to take place it creates co2 plus h2o and depending on how long the chain is 
will depend on how much how many molecules of carbon dioxide and how many molecules of H2O are produced and how many molecules of oxygen are needed. So it's a simple balancing equation. Okay. If it is if there is incomplete combustion, if there's not enough oxygen, okay, we're going to have CO. We're going to have carbon monoxide produced. So oxygen will still be there, okay, but there's not going to be enough of it. So that means that instead of CO2, that means it's going to be CO, carbon monoxide instead. And therefore, when you're doing the equation, even though it's plus O2, there's going to now be less oxygen. Okay, but they will tell you if it's complete or incomplete combustion. If it's complete combustion, okay, CO2 is produced. If it's incomplete, CO is produced. Okay. Now, these longer chain hydrocarbons, um, we might not have much use for them. Okay, so what we do is we're going to break them down in a process called cracking. Now, what cracking is, is we're going to pass these hydrocarbons over a very hot catalyst. Okay, at high temperatures, we're going to mix it with steam. And what's going to happen is it's going to break those chains and it's going to form alkene molecules. Okay, and it also forms smaller chains of alkanes. Okay. Um, we call this thermal decomposition and to find the formula of an alkene it's a lot easier than an alkane we just say CN so N is the number of carbons and then the number of hydrogens is just going to be 2 multiplied by the number of carbons that's it okay nice and easy um, when it's an alkene it's going to be called an unsaturated hydrocarbon which means it doesn't have the full amount of hy um, hydrogens okay and yes, we can then make use of these alkenes for other uh, sources. Okay, it can either be in this case for different plastics can be made instead of just using it for tar. Okay, so it becomes more useful. And yeah, so this process is called cracking. Okay, it's the breakdown of these long chain hydrocarbons into shorter alkenes and alkanes. Okay, using heat and a catalyst. Okay, I hope this has made sense for you. Uh, my name is Cameron and I'll see you in the next lesson.